Okay, here is an example. I didn't write down the whole thing. This is an example problem using position, velocity, and average velocity, and momentum. Okay, so the problem says that some object, it was a, it just says an object, with a mass of 27 kilograms, starts at this position. Can't read it. It says 8, negative 12, negative 4 meters at t equals 0 seconds. And then later it's at 3, negative 15, 6 meters at t equals 6.2 seconds. So the first question is, what's the average velocity? Okay, so I'm going to start with this. The average delta r over delta t. It's the change in position over change in time. And so if, if you draw a picture, let's see, 8, so it starts, it starts over here. Um, let's say it's 8, negative 12. It's actually down here. And then it moves to over here. Well, that's bad. Let me, let me erase that. So let's say, here's my origin. It starts right here, and it moves to over here. So we'll call this vector r1, and this vector r2, and this vector delta r. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so delta r is going to be r2 minus r1. That's the displacement. So that means if I take this vector and subtract that vector, I'll get delta r. So let's do that. Let's call this r1 equals r2 equals. So delta r is going to be r2 minus r1. So that's going to be this component, subtract that component. We can do it in component form. So I get 3 minus 8, so I get negative 5. And then I get negative 15 minus negative 12 is going to be negative 3. Wait, is that right? Yeah. It went down. Okay. Check it. And then I get 6 minus negative 4. It's also moving this way. 6 minus negative 4 is going to be 10. And that is my displacement. Now for my delta t, I get the final time of 6.2 minus 0, 6.2 seconds. So now I can calculate v average is going to be equal to this negative 5, negative 3, 10 meters over 6.2 seconds. So I have a vector divided by a scalar, so each component needs to be divided by that scalar. So it's going to be the vector negative 5 divided by 6.2, and I'm going to do this, um, I'm going to do this real quick over here. See, I have my Python calculator, because I like Python. Um, okay, so let me just write this as, uh, let's call it dr is vector a negative 5, negative 3, 10, and then dt is 6.2, v average equals dr divided by dt, print. And do it on your own, check it, make sure it's right. I get loading. Did I misspell some V average? That should work. The Wi Fi must be bad. I'm blaming Wi Fi. Come on. I'm impatient. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So I get negative point eight oh six. negative 4.8, I'll say negative, let's just say negative 0.48 and 1.6. And this is meters per second. So that's my average velocity, I'll write it up here too. So negative 0 0.806, negative 0 0.48, 1.6 meters per second. Good? Okay. Now the next one. What is the average momentum? Now, I in class, I saw a lot of people doing this. They said, oh, well, I know momentum because Dr. Lane made a big deal about it. He's like, momentum is really this. mv divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. 
where C is the speed of light. Okay, so you can you should be able to see, I mean, you can do it this way if you want. I'm not gonna do it. I'll do it for you later, okay? Um, but since I have something around one meter per second squared divided by three times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared, I can get three times, nine times 10 to the 16th. So one over nine times 10 to the 16th is zero. I mean, close to zero. So you just get one on the bottom. So you get about this, P equals MV. So it's just gonna be the mass of 27 kilograms times the velocity that I have over here, negative 0.806, negative 0.48, 1.6 meters per second. And I get, I'll print it out here. And I get, I'll write it right here, negative 21.77, negative 13.1, and 43.5 kilograms meters per second. Okay. Now for the last part. Okay. So now the last part says, where will it be at 19.2 seconds? So here I can do this. B average, delta R over delta T. Now let's think about going from time two to time three. So I could say this is equal to R3 minus R2. Because they said assume it has the same velocity throughout that time. So what would be the position at R3? That's what we want to find. So if I multiply both sides by delta T, I get V average delta T equals R3 minus R2. Now if I add R2 to both sides, I get R3 equals R2 plus V average delta T. So I know R2, I know V average, delta T I need to find. Delta T is going to be equal to 19.2 minus the time at, at position 2, which is 6.2. So it's going to be uh, 13. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know why. 13. Okay, 13 seconds. So now I can calculate R3. It's going to be R2, which is this right here. 3, negative 15, 6. I'm going to leave off the units just to make it shorter. Uh, plus the V average, which is right here, negative 0.806, negative 0.48, and 1.6 multiplied by 13. So now I need to, to calculate this. The first thing is to make this a vector. So I need to multiply 13 by each of one of these things. And then I can add the two vectors by adding the components. I'm going to do it all at once since I have my uh, computer right here. Okay, so let's say uh, dt3 is 13. And I'm trying to find r3. r3 is gonna be uh, r2, which I never said. r2 equals uh, 13, three, that's a vector. Three, negative 15, six. I already have the v average, so this is gonna be R2 plus V average times DT3. And I get R3 is negative 7.48, negative 21.3, 26, or tw let's say 27 meters. Now, one of the important things is that I didn't have to use 0.2 and 3. I actually could have used 1 and 3. I could have done the same thing and said this is R3 minus R1 over delta T3 minus T1, and I should get the same answer. Okay, redo it and you should be able to check that. Um, but that's it.